We have mentioned that the metabolic syndrome is also called insulin resistance syndrome. But what is insulin resistance? Let's clarify that before we move on. In order to understand insulin resistance, first we need to understand how insulin works. Insulin is a small hormone that is released by the pancreas when you just have eaten a meal and the blood glucose levels rise in your bloodstream. Insulin is one of the best studied hormones in our body. It was first isolated about 100 years ago. And even though we know a lot about it, researchers still find out new things. Its primary task is to stimulate the uptake of glucose into cells. This glucose is either used for energy production or is stored inside the cells. After a meal, your blood sugar is generally high. But once glucose is taken up by the tissues, the level drops. To have reliable test results that can be compared between patients, blood sugar should be therefore measured before we eat something in the morning, which is also referred as a fasting glucose levels. But how does insulin induce glucose uptake? Insulin binds to its receptors in the membrane of the cells. This binding creates an intracellular signaling cascade which leads to the translocation of the glucose channels to the cell membrane. As a result, the cells can take up glucose. In other words, insulin basically works as a key opening the door to our cells for the glucose. But not all cells in our body have the same locks, which means only certain cell types are insulin sensitive cells because they have insulin receptors. Those are, for example, adipocytes, which are the main cells in the fat tissue or adipose tissue, the muscle cells, and also the hepatocytes, which are the main cells of our liver. Now that we know how insulin works, we can move on to understand what happens during insulin resistance. Generally speaking, there are two main types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease that leads to a less or no insulin production in the pancreas, and therefore insulin has to be provided by injections. However, since type 1 diabetes is not related with the metabolic syndrome, we will not focus on it in this course. Type 2 diabetes is a direct effector and cause of the metabolic syndrome. In this case, insulin is still produced, but the cells stop responding to it. As a result, glucose is accumulated in the blood and the cells are actually starving. Therefore, people with insulin resistance are often hungry despite having eaten, because the cells signal to the brain that they do not have enough nutrients. Furthermore, patients suffering from insulin resistance have the following symptoms. In the short term, they have increased blood sugar levels and fatigue, because the cells are no longer able to efficiently use glucose for energy production. This also presents with increased thirst. Thirst is the body's answer trying to dilute the increased sugar levels and to get rid of it via excretion with the urine. Therefore, the increased sugar levels can actually also be measured in the urine. People with insulin resistance also often suffer from unintended weight loss when the disease manifests. But the question is, why do we have these symptoms? The explanations will be given to you throughout this course. So let's sum up what we did discuss in this video. We talked about what insulin resistance is, how insulin works, and last but not least, how insulin resistance is related to type 2 diabetes. In the next video, we will introduce you to the metabolic organs that are mainly responsive to the action of insulin.